Hi guys, this is Editing Me coming to you because I forgot to mention a few weeks ago Matthew and I filmed a video for his channel with our reactions to the Women's Prize 2020 shortlist that is linked below. I know that a lot of you found my channel through those Women's Prize videos that I used to make so you can get your fix if you want at that link. And let's go to me with my hair down. Say hello. Look you guys, he's getting jowls. Hi guys, I'm here today to discuss something blissfully insignificant my TBR progress. Now for those of you who haven't watched my earlier videos on this, or um, if you have and they were just so boring that you've since forgotten, I would like to get close to zero TBR in the next few years. So I created a rule for myself this year that I have to read three books that I physically owned pre-2020 for every one new book that I buy. You sleepy baby. Did you get tired of me asking you rhetorical questions? I've had a lot of different TBR plans and goals in the four years that I've been on booktube so no one is more surprised than I am to report that this plan is working. It's working so well and I'm used to TBR check-ins on booktube being these very relatable reports of failure, you know? And this almost feels like uncharted territory for me so I want to break down why this has been successful so far and, and unexpectedly positive. I should start by saying I've instated two new rules that have helped a lot. <laughs> instated, like I'm my own governing body. But no, these rules have been really good. So the first is that in terms of the books I buy in 2020, for every four of them that I read, I earn a fifth bonus book. And that's been another huge incentive to read these books that I'm buying. And the other rule is that in terms of my TBR, if one of those books is over 500 pages, it counts as two TBR books read. And if it's over 700 pages, it counts as three books. And that is just to level the playing field and make sure that I'm not avoiding bigger books. Still not a perfect system, but I don't care enough to get more technical than that. In the first four months of 2020, I read the equivalent of 18 TBR books because Portrait of a Lady counted as two. Sucker was really close to counting as three because it was 670 pages, but whatever. So through my system, I've earned seven books and I've read four of them. Those are Border by Kopka Kasabova, Actress by Anne Enright, Bloodland by Timothy Snyder, and Minute in Chernobyl by Adam Higginbotham. And then I have three more that are unread. Those are The Butchers by Ruth Gilligan, Foxes Unearthed by Lucy Jones, and then Affinity by Sarah Waters is my seventh book. And this was my first bonus book that I earned by finishing Midnight in Chernobyl. The one slight disappointment is that overall number 18. I, I would have hoped that would be higher in a four month span, but I know that's mostly because of all the work reading I've been doing, especially the last two months. I've just been going through a lot of manuscripts and proposals and I've been enjoying those too. So I'm, I'm not being hard on myself for that being a lower number than I'd want. It just means that realistically this project is going to take me a little while <laughs> to fully accomplish. But apart from that, it's changed so many aspects of my reading for the better in ways I couldn't necessarily have plans. And I'm grateful for booktube to be able to <laughs> talk about this because um, as opposed to with anybody else in my life where I'd be 100% sure that they didn't care, with some of you guys you actually might care to hear me talk about this. So one aspect is that for the first time in years, since well before booktube, my TBR isn't increasing at all. And so even though I'm not decreasing it hugely either, psychologically it's such a difference for it to be steadily going in the right direction. I think when it comes to TBR discussions, we tend to focus a lot more on the reading part of the equation and a lot less on the buying and gifting aspect, you know, on acquiring less for a certain period. And that's for obvious reasons. Everybody likes getting new books, you know, whether that's through the library or through friends or stores, whatever. It's a lot less exciting to um, do less of something, you know, and that's the, the part of decreasing a TBR that tends to freak people out when it comes to their goals. You know, this fear of disciplining and restraining yourself until one day you just freak out and buy 10 books. But honestly, this hasn't felt limiting or like a punishment in any way. Partly it's because in terms of how much I read overall, three books isn't that 
long of a wait until the next book that I can get. Depending on your reading, if you're interested in doing something like this, it might make sense to lower that to two books or one and a half for every new book that you buy. But it also hasn't felt like a punishment because as it turns out, I've been way more excited about these books individually than I would have been for them if I'd been hauling them the same way I had before. There's the sense of earning each one. And more than that, I have a much more concentrated, specific excitement about them. I always know why this book and why now. And when I look back on my previous hauls, there was a lot of genuine anticipation in them. I, I chose those books for a reason and I wanted to read them. But part of that anticipation was a kind of artificial high of just having more stuff that I liked and also this diffuse feeling of, oh, my reading for the next month or two is gonna be so great because of this stack, when what would usually happen is that I would read a quarter to a third of that stack and the rest would go into circulation on my TBR and become part of my overall TBR burden, which as I've said before, a lot of readers wouldn't feel is a burden in any way, but I personally do get anxious to see a growing physical TBR on my shelves. Then there's the TBR books themselves. I've had a lot of fun choosing which three I'm going to tackle next and sometimes I've been shopping my shelves at random and there's a particular pleasure from reading a book that you've owned for a while and there's this this sense of rediscovery and of of appreciating what's in front of you which isn't always our natural state as humans. At the beginning of the year I, I guess I worried that this system would make my TBR books feel like a chore or or a barrier maybe but I unhauled any books last year that I didn't want to read anymore. And so in terms of what was left, that process of actually experiencing worthy books has been fun and, and not fraught in any way. Okay, another revelation, and it's sad that this was a revelation, is how nice it is to read books soon after you buy them. And of course that happened pre-2020, but it's happening all the time now. The best example of this is Bloodlands by Timothy Snyder. This is exactly the kind of book that I would have been super pumped to buy for this year and that would have sat on my shelf for many subsequent years. Something about detailed weighty nonfiction always made me feel like I needed a specific push from the universe to read it. Yeah, you know, I couldn't just feel like reading it. The urge had to almost overpower me in order for me to pick this kind of book up from my shelf. Whereas now, because it was the third book that I bought all year, I bought it, a week later I started it, and about a week after that I'd finished. This puppy was on my TBR shelf for two weeks. That never would have happened before, and partly that's because of the extra reward I'm giving myself for every four you know, books that I read that I've, I've bought in 2020, but I'm also just more carefully assessing what I want to buy based on what I want to read soon, actual soon, not fake soon. Another thing that just occurred to me is that my idea of a splurge has changed in this process. Pre-2020, if I was having a really bad day, I would buy myself four to ten books, and when they arrived, I would just kind of sit there and pet them, you know, not to sound creepy, but there was that, that rush of, you know, treating yourself. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's important to cheer yourself up when you can. This isn't a self-care expose. But in my case, I was treating myself in a way that would increase my anxiety down the line. I have a long-term pipe dream of not being a menace to myself, which is a whole other video I'll never make. But what I'll say now in terms of buying books is that if I were to buy one book, maybe two, that I hadn't earned through my TBR reading, I'd get the same rush as I used to get from 10 books. You know, some reward center in my brain has been rewired. I wasn't sure if I was even gonna include this last train of thought, but we don't talk about money very often or very openly on booktube and, and that can be alienating. So even though this is kind of awkward and will open me up to some fair criticism, because of my past salary and rent 
situations, and especially before I moved to New York and had access to the New York Public Library, I could not afford to buy as many books as I was buying all at retail price. I just couldn't. And so I did buy some books on Amazon. And like, I'm, I'm sure that those of you watching fall on some kind of a spectrum when it comes to Amazon in terms of what you think of the company overall and how you do and don't use that service. But um, I'm also guessing that a good portion of you are in the kind of uncomfortable place that I was in previous years where I had serious ethical concerns but was still in the habit of using it. And so this sort of funny, unintended but very important consequence of the fact that I'm buying sporadically now is that I won't be ordering a single Amazon book all year unless I, I cannot find a book anywhere else, which I don't envision happening. And so I am buying some on, on Book Depository if I really prefer the British editions. For the most part, I am buying at retail price this year from bookshop.org, from IndieBound, or from my local non-discounted stores. And if you care about bookstores, this is a really good time to make that effort because so many of them are facing crises. Also, small independent publishers are. So if you happen to have your eye on a book that comes from one of those publishers, it'd be a great time to buy it. You know, I'm not <laughs> getting up on my soapbox here, but um, you don't have to get into this, but Amazon is repugnant well beyond books. And I'm just really happy that a side effect of this project ha has been that I can buy at retail price. And it's sad and not a good reflection on me at all that it took this big of a change to align my values with my habits. Um, but I also think that unless you're one of those, you know, hardworking and lucky booktubers who are sent a lot of books from publishers, owning books costs money. And it's, it's good for us to be able to kind of open that kind of conversation up in a way that's not defensive and not lecturing, you know, just speaking about it from where we are and where I am is in the industry. And um, yeah, it is important. I had more to say than I thought, but I'm, um, I'm just happy with this challenge and the way that my reading year is going. It's made me really happy. So if you are trying to reduce your TPRs, I hope that some aspect of this was helpful. And even if not, I would really like to hear about how you're feeling about your 2020 reading year so far, now that we're a third of the way through the year, and a very particular, bizarre year it has been in the life of this planet. So thank you for watching, you guys. I hope you and your loved ones are safe. I know it, it sounds trite for me to say that, but I, I really, like, I'm sending you good vibes through the camera right now, thinking about you, and I will see you in my next video.